everyone, Angular version 20 is just around the corner or might have released by the time this video goes out. And it is loaded with developer friendly updates that we are going to cover in this video. We are quickly going to blaze through all the features that you need to know as an Angular developer that comes with Angular version 20. And by the end of this video, you'll know what's new, what's changed and how you can use Angular like a pro. Angular templates just got smarter in version 20. First up, you can actually do math in Angular templates like a normal person. As you can see, the JavaScript exponential operator is now supported in Angular templates, so you can essentially use them inside the curly braces and make use of it. Similarly, the JavaScript in operator also works now in templates, so you can actually check properties that exist within an object and then render your component accordingly. But wait, there's more syntactic sugar. Angular 20 now introduces tagged template literals within the template itself, which means that now you can use function with backtick strings inside interpolation. For example, if you had a greet function within your component's TypeScript file, you could actually render it like this. By the way, if you have been following the evolution of Angular, you already might have seen these blocks like at the rate if, at the rate for, well, you can start using them now. And if you had code like this before, which used the structural directives in Angular like ng if or ng for, you can actually now replace them with the new control flow blocks. For example, at the rate if, you could have else in there, and then also you could use the for loop as well. So if you wanted to have a quick comparison, you would notice that we used to use ng if with a template used inside the else condition but now we can simply have the if else which seems more natural and more fluent as how we code in javascript or typescript usually now let's not forget to talk about the reactive heaven with signals and effects well do you remember that they were introduced in version 16 and 17 well now they have matured and the effect api is no longer experimental it's now actually stable and if you have not worked with effect so far in angular and you come from a react background it's essentially similar to what you would do with a use effect in react well more or less and by the way in version 20 of angular effects also support a proper cleanup which basically means that within an effect you will get an on cleanup function that you can call when you want to basically clean up for example if you had a timer that you want to clear when the component destroys you can essentially use this on cleanup to do that and the same goes for if you had a subscription that you wanted to unsubscribe this makes things really really easy another cool thing that lands with angular version 20 is related to the dynamic component creation Previously, when we had to provide values or properties to the created component dynamically, we could do it by getting first the component ref, then the instance, and then basically creating those properties or subscribing to values. Well, in version 20, we can provide inputs and outputs directly using this bindings array, which essentially allows us to provide the input binding and the output binding. I personally find this really neat, and you can see that in one single call, you not only create the component, but you also provide the bindings related to it. And again, as I said about signals, Angular signals are now officially mainstream, which means that in version 19, we got the signal, the input and output being stable, but the effect API is now stable as well in version 20. Now let's talk about some more cool stuff, server side rendering that actually got a bit smarter. If you don't already know, Angular 19 introduced something called incremental hydration, which is the groundwork that is becoming now more powerful. Well, some of you might be asking, what's that? It is actually the ability to hydrate the page in chunks rather than all at once. So your app actually becomes faster in that regard. If you remember, Angular actually introduced the defer block in Angular 19 in the developer preview. And then on top of it, you could use the hydrate statement to tell Angular when to hydrate your particular chunk. Well, now that it has been stable, you can now use it in production and see for yourself how performant things have become. Another cool thing about the server side rendering in Angular is the route level rendering mode. And as you can see, you can decide it to be server side rendering, pre rendering, client side rendering or whatnot but in version 20 this becomes more robust because in version 20 now you can prefetch parameters during the pre-rendered time for example rendering multiple product pages using their ids ahead of time and all of this means that you have fine grain control over your server-side rendering strategy so you only do server-side rendering when it's actually required and there is more good news angular enables the advanced ssr features by default for all the new projects for example if event replay which replaced the user events that happened during the SSR time is now stable and turned on by default since version 19. For example, if a user tried to click somewhere before the client bundle got back to the browser, Angular will replay that event once the hydration is complete resulting in a seamless experience. And there's another news, say bye bye to zone.js and we are talking about zoneless. With version 20, we are actually one step closer to having zoneless applications. And by that 
I mean that the zoneless change detection has moved from experimental to being in developer preview. And yes, you can see that they have actually renamed it from provide experimental zoneless to actually provide zoneless change detection. And I want to be really clear here. Going zoneless means that Angular will not detect any changes on its own. So you will either have to manually trigger the change detection or rely on signals which are actually built to work without zones. Well, some of you might be asking, what is the benefit of all of this? Well, the benefit is potentially better performance. And because there's no more patching every possible asynchronous API, we actually do less and we have a smaller bundle size because we are getting rid of zone.js library. Now, again, this is still an opt-in. So don't go ripping out zone.js in all of your applications in production, not just yet. But if you like living on the cutting edge, give it a try. As you can see, Angular is clearly moving towards a future where zoneless is optional and it is leaning on signals and other mechanisms for change detection. And to me, it's actually huge. It modernizes the Angular's core and reduces the overhead. Now let's move towards some tools and CLI goodies. We have a bunch of schematics that you can use within your Angular projects to basically update your project to the new good stuff. For example, you can migrate to signal-based inputs automatically, which will remove the at the rate input within your code to essentially using the input function, which essentially gives you a signal. Similarly, you can migrate from ngif, ng4, all those structural directives to the new control flow using the if, for, else blocks, etc. You can also have those cool self-closing tags like we had in React, for example. And this is the one that I like the most, cleaning up unused imports. I often forget them. And sometimes when your project doesn't really have good linting or your editor, these are really handy. And by the way, on a side note, Angular's deploy tooling has also improved quite a lot and it's working with multiple providers, that is multiple cloud platforms. So if you use ng deploy working with Firebase or Microsoft Azure, Angular 20 actually makes it even smoother to deploy your applications to production. Now let's talk about some cool stuff coming in Angular Material and CDK. We're not going to cover all of the things, but I'm going to show you what my favorites are. So from Material 3, we have the tonal button, which actually is now landing in Angular Material version 20. And you can start using it just like this. All you need to do is say appearance is tonal. And there you go. Another cool thing that's coming to the CDK is an accordion. And I can't really tell you how many times or in how many projects I've built my own version of accordion and CDK would make things much, much easier. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is cleanups and deprecations. And also, obviously, there are some breaking changes as well. Now, the first thing is that we don't really have the ng reflect attributes that you would see in your HTML templates when debugging or using the Chrome inspector. So that's not created in dev mode anymore. That means that if your tests rely on that, they're going to break now. So it's better to just migrate away from this and update your code. But if you really want to still have them, you can still use this provider that you can get from Angular core and essentially use in your providers array when you're bootstrapping your application. So you will still get those attributes in your HTML, but the Angular team basically recommends getting rid of them as soon as possible. Another thing is that we now don't have the testbed.get and that is removed now. And we used to use it for basically working with services within our unit tests. You would now rather use testbed.inject instead of using testbed.get. So you can basically go ahead and replace all of those instances. And we also have testbed.flush effects, which is removed now. And we used to use it for testing the effects in our components. Now, instead of the flush effects, we are going to use the tick API, which by the way, also runs chain detection. So there may be some cases where you might face some issues, but in general, the understanding of the Angular team and the Google developer experts in Angular is essentially that this is going to be the same behavior as flush effects. Another thing that happens in version 20 is that the platform server testing is now deprecated. So you are not supposed to use it. Rather than that, the server side rendering use cases must be tested using the E2E test. And that is the recommendation by the Angular team. Another important thing is that inject flags is removed. And you can see that this is the PR that essentially enabled that. And that was a flag that could be passed to inject, injector.get, environment injector.get and whatnot. And that is essentially an enum that contains different values. So if you're using inject flags, you might want to just get rid of it now. Now let's summarize what we have discussed and also the next steps. In general, in version 20, templates are more expressive. They're closer to JavaScript parity or TypeScript for that matter, which means that we can do more in the template than before. We also got the signals stable. And I'm really, really happy about that, especially with the effect API being stable now. And the main reason for that is that I personally believe that signals is the way to go with Angular. And it's going to be the core concept if you understand it well with the effect API, with view child, query child, etc. You can build really robust applications.
application, really reactive application, and you're going to be able to maintain them easier as well. Having said that about signals, you might want to get this particular book. And I actually know the author very well. And I can recommend that the author is pretty good who's working on this book. This book is not out there yet. But if you want to be notified when the book comes out, it's going to be coming out really soon, maybe in a month. And it tells you and teaches you all that you need to know about the signal APIs in Angular. And it's going to be up to date with version 20, of course. So that was a shameless plug. Now let's move towards dynamic components. We know now that dynamic components are easier to be created now, providing the inputs and output bindings. So the code is cleaner. The way we are doing it is also easier to maintain as well. And we also looked at SSR. So your apps are much performant. They're faster. They would also have better SEO, better user experience. And Angular is making a lot of improvements to have things out of the box that you would expect from a server-side rendered application. For example, the dynamic parameters that we discussed when we discussed about pre-rendering. And of course, we cannot forget our friend or foe, whatever you want to call it, that is zoneless. So we really, really want to get rid of zone.js. And I think we are really getting closer to it with all of these changes, with the APIs coming from experimental to developer preview. And you never know when it's going to be stable pretty soon, I guess. And finally, proper cleanup. So deprecated APIs that are clearly mentioned, not breaking the test as well, and also having a lot of migrations as well. So the migrations and the schematics that I showed you before, a lot of them might already be covered when you actually do ng update. And I think that has been my experience so far. Let me know what has been your experience when you try to update an Angular app in the past. And with that said, we are actually moving towards what you should do next. First of all, I would say start using signals as much as possible. We've seen on social media, multiple people saying that, okay, I'm using Angular 14 or 13 and I can't really use signals. But I would say just create a new application, try to build the classic to do app and get yourself familiarized with Angular signals, because that's the way to go if you want to really work on the future of Angular, so to say. I would also suggest to use the HTTP resource API, which out of the box provides you the signals for is loading, error and value. And it makes things easier because not only you're sort of getting rid of subscriptions there and you out of the box get a signal which you can work with, which you can make work with the effects as well. And everything becomes more reactive in a sense. I would also encourage you to look into the defer block because I think that's probably one of the coolest features that has landed recently in Angular. Not only it allowed us to load components which are not on the screen at the moment, but on the same page, but it also was the building blocks for hydration or incremental hydration when it comes to server side renting. So I would definitely say try this one out. And something that almost every developer that is an Angular developer looking out on the Angular roadmap has been talking about is the signal based form. So while this is not really landing in Angular version 20, I think that's something to look out for because I'm really excited about when this comes out and I change the way I use forms in Angular. And you may also want to keep an eye on things like selectorless components and also a bit more function based APIs that are being explored by the Angular team at the moment. And finally, don't forget to ng update. If you're already on Angular version 18 or 19, I would say just update your Angular application to 20. I personally think it may not take much time, especially if your application is a small or medium scale. Give it a try and let me know in the comments if you get stuck anywhere. You can always reach out for help, of course. But with that said, we are actually at the end of this video. Angular 20 is actually a big step forward and it actually keeps proving that the framework can move fast and forward while maintaining the stability that we actually love. So whether you are an Angular veteran or a newcomer in Angular, these changes are there to make your life easier and your applications better. So go ahead, upgrade, experiment with these new toys and build something amazing. And as always, happy coding and may the ng-force be with you.